for these slides, right? Yeah, for sure. Actually, I should also mention this and the recording will go up on the website, and almost all this information is also on the guidelines of the rubric, which is on our website on the round two. Um, this executive summary is also on the round two page of the website, but I'm just going to go over it briefly and point out some sort of highlights. This um, executive summary was chosen as a sample from the finalist piece last year, and we chose it because of how it's very well structured. You can see they break down their policy recommendations into three bullet points and they give sub points under them, which makes it very easy for a judge when they're pulling out an executive summary to briefly read over it and get an idea of what you're talking about in your policy. The idea for an executive summary is the judge should be able to pull it out in the five minutes while they're waiting for your team to start, look it over, and have an idea of what you're going to be proposing that day. And then it should also sort of give any sort of citations that you think might be critical for them to know in advance. Um, again, the same about this one. Um, the header includes all the relevant information. Um, it uses bold and underlined to sort of accentuate very important points, and it's very well structured, which is important thing you should look for when designing your memo or your executive summary. And now, presentations themselves. So each team has 20 minutes to present their presentation. Um, and at the 20 minute mark, we will have to ask you to stop. So please be sure that when our committee sitting with you, that you have two minutes left to start wrapping up, getting to those closing statements. We don't want to have to cut you off. Um, and after the first five minutes of that 20 minute span, judges are able to interrupt you for asking questions. Um, so keep that in mind when you measure timing, that you might need to factor a little bit more time in in case the judge asks you clarifying questions. And then after those 20 minutes are over, Judges have an additional five minutes after that to ask additional follow-up questions. Um, so that's when they'll probably get some more in-depth questions about how you funded this and their follow-up questions and things like that. Um, and then after that five minutes is up, the judges will stop asking questions and there'll be five minutes to transition to the next team to get ready. Any questions about sort of the structure timing of those 20 minutes? Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, so now we're gonna talk more about the format of this presentation. So basically, your first slide should have your title and your uh, team number. Uh, I wouldn't put your names, just because that looks a bit more cluttered and it's easier to read. Um, next is your problem. <coughs> you shouldn't be spending that much time talking about your problem. You should clearly identify it in the first couple of slides. But after that, I would focus more on your solution. Um, and then in terms of length, your PowerPoint should be at least 10 slides, but just because that there's a minimum number doesn't mean it should be 10 slides, and it also doesn't mean it should be like 50 slides. Uh, make sure it's reasonable for the length of time you have to talk, and make sure you factor in the fact that judges will be asking you questions throughout the entire uh, presentation after the first five minutes. All right, um, and then please make sure that you cite your sources in the notes of each slide. We will be checking these, uh, making sure that there's no academically dis dishonest behavior going on. Uh, please make sure you do that. Yeah, please. And what's do you mean in the fancy one too? Like, so yeah, you if you print it out, we can see it, and you can also look at it on the screen. Yeah. All right. So um, appearance. So make sure that your presentation is uh, consistent in its appearance. Don't use like Times New Roman and then like Com Comic Sans and then like Helvetica, <laughs> like and Wingding. Please don't. Just make sure it's uh, consistent in the appearance and um, make it as aesthetically pleasing as possible. Uh, while I would like to say that appearance doesn't matter, it does sort of matter in how you deliver your presentation. So make sure that it looks as good as it can. Um, for your conclusion, I would end your pres presentation with something that's incredibly memorable uh, because remember, the first and last thing you say are probably the things that the judge is going to remember and they're going to be looking at a lot of presentations on the day of. Make sure they remember your presentation so that you know, they can grade it well. Um, and then speaking of judges, your audience, make sure that your presentation is geared towards the judges. Um, don't make it geared towards, you know, 20-something who doesn't know anything about this. Make sure it's geared to someone who has some prior knowledge, some to a lot of prior knowledge, and someone who's an academic in some way. Right. Um, and then, 
All right, so the content of your presentation. <laughs> so make sure you are as specific as possible uh, with your policy recommendations. Uh, please address the feasibility. That is the biggest question you're going to get from the judges. Um, then outside research, once again, cite your sources. Uh, use outside research to uh, you know, support your points. And then make sure that your proposals are actionable and they're timely and you elaborate exactly how they will be um, how they will be done. All right. All right guys, so just some style points uh, that the judges uh, will grade you on for the rubric. Um, your word choice must be appropriate to the intended audience. Um, these people are experts, they're usually very knowledgeable professors or uh, academics in the field. So formal language is very important. You want to sound professional when presenting, even though it's kind of obvious. All right, so terms specific to the issue must be used in the correct form with explanations if needed. So this happens a lot with tech teams. They use a lot of acronyms uh, or even uh, a lot of, pop like if you're writing about policy government agencies, please the first time you say it, say the whole thing, and then you can use the acronym. Um, that's really important when it comes to judge, uh, some it can clear up a lot of confusion with the judges that they might have. And you don't want them coming in 10 minutes later being like, oh, what was that thing that you mentioned? You never clarified that. Because then you have to go back and start all over and that kills a lot of time. So in grammar and clarity, this is pretty obvious. The judges are obviously going to be grading you on uh, the grammar that you use in your presentation and how clear your ideas are presented. And uh, tone, avoid using the passive voice. Try to, try to sound professional. Don't try to confuse the judges. All right? So team dynamic. This is. Uh, uh, one of the most important slides in this presentation because the majority of the points come from how you present the topic. All right, so participation. Each member of the team should contribute to the presentation. Um, so that's pretty obvious. Once again, every member needs to have something you speak about. And that's up to the team to, uh, to decide. You can have a formal speaking order or uh, when the judges chime in about questions on certain topics, you can each have a, uh, a central topic that you want to talk about. Um, so that's one way that everyone can participate. All right, uh, so transitions, um, all right, so transitions between speaking should be clear, should be smooth, and this is where uh, I'm gonna address this a little bit later on with some strategies to help you with this, um, but especially with questions. Um, the judges might ask about something that uh, on a certain slide that you're presenting that you might not have the greatest knowledge of, but it's your teammate's idea uh, or main topic. So that's where you need to pass off and that's when uh, transitioning becomes really important. So, present, uh, so uh, for the presentation, um, you need to obviously maintain eye contact and, and form a body language with, with the judges. So the judges, when speaking, will most likely be looking at the slides more than you, because you're just supposed to be either explaining the idea, not all the information is supposed to be on the slides. So don't, don't be like, hey, over here, or anything like that to interrupt the judges, all right? They know what they're doing, they've done this before. All right, so um, also uh, a strong, inclusive team dynamic. That's one of the most important statements here because every person should go in there with a role. That should be a key uh, form of the team dynamic. Uh, everybody has an, a central purpose, whether it's to present on a certain topic, present on a certain number of slides, that needs to be planned out beforehand. And that sounds obvious, but of course the judges are gonna throw curveballs at you with the question. That's when the, you really need to be prepared and be ready to work within uh, your team to solve the to solve slash answer the questions that they give you. All right, so that's really important, and I'm going to go over that in a second with some tips and tricks at the end. So aesthetic, um, the presentation should be neat and aesthetically pleasing. Uh, this includes spacing, not too many words on each slide, and image and images where necessary. Do not use videos in your presentation. All right. That's pretty obvious. And also with transitions, try not to use too many transitions. You don't want to sit there for 10 minutes hitting a mouse, clicking away while they slowly load up on screen. All right? So, and also with the number of uh, things that you have on the slide, try to keep it to a minimum. Keep it to an idea or a, uh, a central concept or something about your platform. Don't try to overload a slide with too much information because these judges, we do provide all the information, including your slide decks, your executive summaries, to these judges beforehand. But these judges are basically glorified college students. They're not looking at it until that day. They're not gonna remember everything that you have on those slides. So keep it concise, keep it clear, all right? 
So just some things I want to go over that we've seen teams struggle with in the past are some transition tips, all right? So when answering questions, uh, so hold on, let me back up. I'm gonna go over some presentation tips first. Um, so you're, you're gonna have a lot of information that you're gonna have research that you wanna include in this, but you're gonna have to limit it in your presentation. But that doesn't mean the judges are not gonna ask questions on it. So you will have, it's always a good idea to have your main presentation slides, your 10, 15, however many slides that you're going to present. And it's also really good, I always call them appendix slides, I don't know what they're actually called, but it's extra slides with extra information. Um, where if the judges ask a question, they're like, yeah, hold on, let me just flip to that real quick, go past your presentation. You should, it shows that you've done the research, you, you have the knowledge, you, you, you have it prepared, and then you go back, all right? So that's really important to have because the judges are gonna ask questions on something that not necessarily on it, but you wanna show that you did the research and you at least have something prepared, all right? So when this happens, it could either be, a, uh, let's talk about transitions between teammates, all right? So you, it could be anything from a more complex strategy where you, each, each team member has a certain topic in mind where they're gonna answer the questions on those topics. Um, and it's completely up to the team to decide, but that could be a little too centralized um, so a good thing to do is uh, just have it have something in mind where it shows like I want to speak I, I want like you're talking right now but it's my I want to speak next um, to the judges so it could be as simple as oh a step up strategy which is what my team used two years ago was oh they asked the question I'm gonna take a step forward that means I want to talk and then if one of my if I'm talking one of my teammates wants to talk next they take a step forward too and something as simple as that, just to get fluid transition, so you're not trying to talk over one another, you're going like, oh, it's you, you go, me go, whatever. So it's just as simple as take a step up and answer the, the question. So those are things that you need to think about, just to make the presentation go more fluid, all right? So an another thing is, um, oh, another thing when answering questions, don't be afraid to tell a judge if they ask a question on something you haven't covered yet, instead of having to just flip through your presentation back and forth and it messes up the order, you can say like, we're getting to that in a minute, if you don't mind, uh, could you hold on for a second, or that's on our next slide, and usually they'll be, they'll step back and be like, okay, but make sure you answer that question. Don't forget about it, because that will be points off on the rubric, right? So just some things to think about uh, when you're flipping back and forth. That kills a lot of time, and we have basic clickers for you to use in the presentation room. Oh, we don't have we don't have clickers. Never mind. So all right. So it can be really annoying to go back and forth uh, all this time standing at a computer just hitting a mouse. All right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, when you're practicing um, like doing transitions between slides, just kind of keep that in mind that you're not going to have a clicker to like pass between the team members. So I don't know, like practice knowing when to press next on the keyboard, that kind of thing. It's very minor, but it helps with the fluidity. So I want to go one last thing before we wrap up here. I know a couple people asked questions about where these items were on our website, so I wanted to actually show you the website and show you where you can find all this material, just in case you're looking for anything later on. So you can go to our website, nyutc.org, and then you can go to round two up in the upper right hand corner. And this includes the guidelines, which is what a lot of this presentation is drawn from, as well as the rubric, which is what you're actually getting drawn on the day of, as well as these slides and a video recording from a presentation workshop from a couple of years ago, and our sample executive summary and sample presentation day. Um, so you can look over these, and if you have any additional questions, you'll have an email. You can send us an email, and we'll get back to you right away. Anyone have any questions? Anything you want to talk about? Yes, sir. Yeah, um I think clearly the questions from the judges are like a key part of the presentation. In your own experience, how many do we get to like sort of? Okay. I'm, I'm glad you asked that because I actually completely forgot to mention this. All right, so it can be anywhere from the judges want you to present them the topic to you're getting bombarded with questions. So it's really up to the judges on how they feel about your presentation. My recommendation is that um, you spend half, you plan for your presentation to be half the time that you're allotted, all right? Because it gives you plenty of time to go over questions or to maybe to tackle a subject that the judges bring up that you might not have thought of. So that's a recommendation. Please don't take that to the bank. Uh, it's completely up to the, your team to decide. But you don't, the judges are, you don't want to not get through your presentation because that is the worst case scenario in this sort of uh, presentation. 
and, and sorry, this sort of competition. All right. So you want to try to plan for your presentation to be over probably around the 10 to maybe 12 minute mark because then the judges will have those 10, 12 minutes to ask for it and you will have time to respond to those questions. So. And you said that we have five uninterrupted units at the beginning. Yes. And that's not true for the last five minutes, right? So, yeah, so it's just your first five minutes are interrupted and after that there's a policy to add and then after that 20 minutes end, it's just your presentation. Yeah. So that's why the, those first five minutes are where you, the, that's your time to get the bulk of your presentation done. Um, and usually for the majority, the majority of the remaining time, you're fielding questions and finishing up the presentation. All right. Also, just as a general tip, as you have to start asking questions in the beginning of those minutes when they can ask questions, you can kind of get a feel for what they're most interested in. So some types of judges are going to be asking a lot of questions about the budget, so that might be their primary concern. Some might ask more about political feasibility. So as they start asking those first couple of questions, use that to get an idea of what they're asking about, what they're interested in. And as you go along in your next slide that you have left, try to go ahead and answer those questions in advance. So that way, say on your first policy recommendation, they ask you a question about budget, make sure to mention that in your second and third policy recommendation. So they don't even have to ask. So you can still have that time yourself. Okay. So just for the purpose of telling our presentation to the judges, what so, so you said that the judges are like glorified college students. Are they only going to be like college students? No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. I meant, I, 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 sorry. I meant like I meant like we provide we provide them your complete slides, we provide them your memo, we provide them your executive summary beforehand. But the chances are they're they're gonna do a quick flip through of this. It's not gonna be a complete like they sit down for yeah. hours and read your presentation. Okay. Okay. So that's what I meant by glorified okay. college students. I apologize for this. The actual Confusion. judges are generally professors and people who yeah. work in the industry. Yeah. So for fairness purposes, we don't publicize this year's judge list beforehand, but you can look at the 2016 and the 2017 judge panels on our website. Those are, if you go to past competition, you can go to uh, 2017 and 2016, you scroll down to the bottom, and they talk about the judges. So you see a lot of people who work at, WA at NYU, work at Wagner, um, but also work for the city um, and for various think tanks. So you can look at this list and get an idea of people, the sort of people that we're recruiting as judges, and you know, sort of where they might be coming from background-wise. And that will give you an idea of who we'll have this year. Awesome. Well, the committee and I will hang around for the next sort of 15 minutes and answer any other questions, if you have anything you can think of, it comes up, feel free to come up and let us know. Otherwise, thank you all so much for coming out, and we'll see you on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.